Welcome to SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regions. Ready for game two of our first Thursday night doubleheader of a new SEC season. The Missouri Tigers have come to Baton Rouge to take on the seventh ranked LSU Tigers. It is dressed like Kim Mulkey night here tonight in the Hall of Fame head coach brought her a game to the b -Mac tonight for this matchup with the two. Welcome courtside. I'm Eric Freed. Christy Thomas Scuddy got the dress like Kim Mulkey memo. I know I'm I feel like I'm supposed to ask who are you wearing here tonight? Well, thank you Mike the Tiger <laughs> for loaning me a jacket this, for this tonight. Is the, this is not her size. It's the mascots jacket. It looks good on you though. I what feel underdressed all of a sudden. Well, we are in Kim Mulkey's house. So I is. think we're all underdressed. <laughs> Well, in this house, this is where they have the national championship banner. There are a few questions about LSU, but this is still a team that is going to be in the mix for the Final Four. Well, they've got scoring prowess. We know that. They've got great rebounding. But there's so many questions because you've had players out with injury. You've had players out due to disciplinary issues. So we still don't know the ceiling for this LSU team, but we do know they can score. Five players averaging double digits, led by Miss Double Double Queen herself, Angel Reese, as well as the reigning SEC Freshman of the Year in Flajay Johnson. For Missouri, this is a team that will play some young players here today, but they are led by a veteran making her 105th career start here tonight, and that's Haley Frank. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same for Mizzou because Haley Frank is an offensive weapon for the Tigers. That trail three, her ability to pick and pop, her ability to come off screen, she's a matchup issue for opposing teams because of her ability to face, take the ball off the bounce, to post up, to rebound. Her ability tonight to create some mismatches will be key if Mizzou's going to get the upset. Missouri 9-4 in the season. They haven't played in a while. Their last game was December the 21st. LSU last played Saturday against Jacksonville, put 110 points on the board. And the fans got the memo on dress like Kim Mulkey night, although I feel like this is the usual attire for a lot of the people here. Why are you taking the jacket off? You need to wear it all game long. Because it's swallowing me. I'm sorry, Mike, but you're just a little <laughs> bigger than I am. The Madam Butterfly jacket has been removed and the mascot can now have it back. We are ready for the start of the SEC season for LSU and Mizzou. The opening tip controlled by the LSU Tigers and they'll go to work on offense. And they pick apart the Missouri defense on the first position. Frank gets fouled in the backcourt by an aggressive Morrow. You take a look at the starting five for Mizzou. They are down two starters due to injury. They have two freshmen in the starting five, including Grace Slaughter and Hannah Linthicum. Mama Dembele is at the point. Ashton Judd is number two in scoring. And we mentioned Haley Frank. Ball ready for LSU. You're seeing the player to player defense. A quick foul for Anissa Morrow. That is something to keep your eye on because of matchup issues against this Missouri face up offense. One and done on that end, and here comes Van Lith the other way. Morrow scored the first basket. She picked up the game's first foul. Williams back to Van Lith. Starting five for LSU. Flaugé Johnson had 20 points in her last game. Angel Reese had 20 rebounds in LSU's last game. She gets her first points of the game and it's an early 4-0 lead for LSU. Dembele to Frank. Morrow has the lean back after picking that early foul up and Frank sticks with it for Mizzou's first two. Well, for Mizzou, you're gonna see them fall back into a 3-2 matchup zone on any kind of make or dead ball. If it's a miss, they're gonna fall back into player to player. LSU worked a lot against the matchup zone, looking to overload and get the matchup they want down in the paint. Reese off balance, can't get it to go. Morrow hits the deck hard. She's slow to get up, and here comes Dembele. They will run, and they are a good three-point shooting team, and Judd answers with the three. Mizzou making on average nine threes a game on the season. Judd having an outstanding sophomore year after an all freshman season in the SEC a year ago. Williams, great three point shooter, not this time. And a rebound for Ashton Judd. So important in this game for Mizzou to limit LSU to one shot. And Robin Pinson told us we want to run. They want to take the first good look. If it's there, if not, 
they'll set up the half-court offense. Linthicum with the travel and the turnover. I was kind of hoping that on Dress Like Kim Mulkey night, Kim would throw a curveball to everybody and come out with a conservative <laughs> look tonight, but I think we know better. Johnson, 20 points her last game. Gets her first two of this game. Well, what did Kim Mulkey say today? She wants her players to be aggressive. She wants them to get excited when her team faces a zone and attack them and create scoring opportunities, and that's what Flage Johnson just did. Frank trying to find Judd. LSU turning teams over on average 24 times a game, and that's going to be a very important number to watch for Robin Pinchton here tonight. Well, and Robin Pinchton talked about it. She said, we got to keep them off the free throw line. But she said it's remarkable that they're getting almost 50% of their points from the paint. She said it's also remarkable that almost 50% of their total points is coming on second chance opportunities and off of the opponent's turnovers. Morrow with the bucket. She's got four. And LSU on top by three. Cabelli will settle things down, having an excellent season so far, the senior from Spain. And you see Mizzou in that five-out motion offense looking to exploit matchups and mismatches for Haley Frank for three. <laughs> <laughs> A career 42% three-point shooter. She's at 38 so far this season. Rattles that in to tie it at eight. Morrow, Frank, look for the call, didn't get it. Haley Frank is someone who will hit the deck, and Robin Pinchton was looking for the call, but the officials did not give it. Moro off to a good start. I just think Anissa Moro is such the X factor for LSU this season. Her ability to not only defend great post players, as you're seeing a legal screen by Mizzou for another turnover. But Anissa Morrow's ability to face up. You see, undersized post, she can put it on the floor and beats Frank to that spot. And then Frank answers on the other end, coming off the down screen, gets the feet set to knock down that three. Williams. That won't drop. Linthicum with the rebound. There's Gambelli. Gambelli with the bounce, a little too late on it. Flage Johnson there on the steal, and here comes LSU in transition. Johnson to the basket with the finger roll for two. Averaging 19 points a game over the last two games, coming on offensively for the Tigers. Frank Moro extends the defense. Shot clock down to six. Grace Slaughter, three-point shot has been key for Mizzou so far. The freshman knocking down the three, averaging 11 points a game. She has started each game here in her first season for Mizzou, playing without Avery Kroenke, who would be in the starting five. She's out with an injury. And Angie Galatolandi, who's been out with an injury. Eric, there's hot from three, and then there's Mizzou right now. Three of three from long range already in this game. This time, Slaughter getting in on the action. Substitution for Mizzou, grad student Abby Fight, who transferred in from Evansville, where she played the last four seasons, is on. Linthicum to the bench. I asked Robin Pinchton earlier today, I said, of all your bigs, who has to play well for you? And she said, Abby Fight. She goes, she needs to be able to come in and knock down some of those threes for us to extend the defense. The foul was on Linthicum, her first. Van Lith can't hit. The point guard, Dembele, in the backcourt can't hang on to it. And it's a turnover. That's already turnover number five for Robin Pinchton's team, but a little bit of a smile there. Her team hanging in there in the opening minutes here at the home of the defending national champions at the PMAC. SEC Network Women's Basketball is presented by Regions, the official bank of the SEC. Well, the calendar has flipped to 2024, but the memories from 2023 are still vivid for LSU. This is an LSU team absolutely on fire. An absurd display from Dean Angel Reese. 
has come to play. Trying to take LSU to the finish line. Cool. Going for the dagger. You bet. Kim Mulkey knows the celebration is imminent. LSU has captured its very first national championship. A turnaround for the ages. That final win was win number 34 on the season for Kim Mulkey's LSU Tigers in just her second year here in Baton Rouge, her fourth national title overall after her three wins at Baylor. They were the preseason number one, but losing to that very good Colorado team. We know what's happened. You talked about it right at the top of the telecast because they have not had a full roster all season long. They won't because Samaya Smith is out for the season with an injury. This is a team that has still got some things to be answered here. And when we asked Kim Mulkey about that, I said, well, you know, what are you looking for? She's like, I'm with you. Yeah. I've told the team the same thing. I'm curious to see what we're going to do in SEC competition. And what wasn't on that graphic was Haley Van Lith also missing four games. This is just her second game back. So this is a team that's still looking to develop chemistry on both ends of the floor. Moro been outstanding so far in her first season at LSU. Eight straight double doubles entering tonight. She's got eight first quarter points. Perfect from the field. Another turnover, that's number six for Mizzou. Johnson, good finish. And that is where I think Flage Johnson is at her best, in transition. She's so smooth, she creates so well. But the key for Mizzou is, as good as this offense is for LSU, they have to make them score in the half court. That three won't drop. 12 points off of those Missouri turnovers so far for LSU. Reese in deep, spins inside for two. And that's what LSU wants to do. They want to get Frank in the paint and go at her one-on-one -on -one and try to get her out of this game due to foul trouble. You were keeping your eyes on paint points. 14 of the 18 points for LSU so far in the paint. And this is an LSU ball club that averages 50 paint points a game. <laughs> Mama to the basket for two. What has impressed you about Mama's game here in her season, senior season? She's shooting the ball extremely well. Field goal percentage, three-point field goal percentage. Her rebounds are up. Her assists are up. Her steals are up. She is playing at such a great pace. She is definitely the stir of the straw that stirs the drink for the Mizzou Tigers. Frank defended on the outside by Reese, who's not afraid to take the defense to the three-point line. Kim Mulkey saying, I have so much confidence in both Morrow and Reese to defend Mizzou out of the three-point line. On the back cut, Judd on the reverse, can't get it, and the rebound for Morrow. Van Lith missed four with plantar fasciitis. And on the post up, the foul's called on Haley Frank. It's her first. Angel Reese gets two feet, shoulders squared in transition, one-on-one, -on -one, and she's got the whole paint to work, and this is where Mamba is so good. That crossover so quick gets her downhill and able to score. Judd will check out of the game. Abby Shrek, freshman. We expect to see four freshmen playing for Mizzou here today. Johnson open three. Michaela Williams with the rebound. Mizzou's been hanging in there on the glass here in the first quarter. Johnson on the drive, second chance opportunity, and Flage makes the most of it. Tough shot. The freshman follows it up. Shrek, her first points in SEC play. I like the attacking na nature of Shrek there. Morrow not wanting to foul, just lets her go. And even on the offensive rebound that Shrek gets, she doesn't want to foul. Open look, Williams, outstanding three-point shooter, not this time. Mama has it knocked away by Johnson. They will stick with Missouri. Good start for Flage Johnson, four of five from the field, eight points. She's just so smooth off the bounce. I mean, the hang time, the ability to extend, the ability 
the ability to elevate. I think this is a matchup issue for Mizzou tonight in transition and when Flage creates off the bounce. Shrek to Frank. That's off the side of the backboard. I think it was touched by Reese, who will get credit for the block. He'll stick with Mizzou, 11 to shoot. This is an area that I think Mizzou needs to be able to steal some points. Out of bounds executions. Can they get some easy scoring opportunities? Frank trying to back in on Reese. Reese standing her ground. Tough shot, wouldn't drop. And lift, entry, Reese, no, Reese, no, Reese. Morrow rather couldn't grab it. And here comes the belly. Missouri with the push, Slaughter with the nice finish. And a player is down for Missouri, Haley Frank is down, face down on the court here at PMAC. Robin Pinchton, first one out there. Don't know if it's a cut chin or a cut lip, but it looks like gonna be some work here. The contact above the three-point line in tr transition after May Basket is under review. That's the voice of Polani Spurlock Welsh, the official who will go to the monitor, working with Teresa Stuck and Akisha Thompson here tonight. Let's take a look as they get ready to look. We're looking at Haley Frank just outside the three-point line. Now that's just incidental contact right there. Reese was just standing her ground. Definitely incidental. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. I mean, she took a shot there. The contact the, is deemed incidental. Player will resume with LSU ball out of bounds. Very quick review, and rightly so. <laughs> Haley Frank, fifth year grad student, native of Missouri, second team all SEC last season and the season before fixture in the lineup for Missouri we've watched enough of her through the years that this will be a very quick cut woman job in the corner there to get Haley Frank back onto the court I mean I think every basketball fan is just relieved to see her get up and run off the floor three-point lead for LSU Williams Van Lift turned it over Abby Fight was in the passing lane. Dembele with the push. Dembele to the hoop. Offensive count it. And the foul. Original guess was perhaps offensive, but they're going to count it. I don't even know if Mama is sure that. Yeah, yeah, that's a three-point play for you. A chance for it here, Mama. And Mama is so good in transition. And once she gets into the paint, you see her just going. And I like the call because I think she was airborne before Haley Van List slid in there. And I know we're starting conference play. And maybe some of you are coming down from football season in the fall season. The restricted arc does not exist in women's basketball. So it's on the court. It's there for the men. They don't take it away for the women's games. But with Van Lith in there, just ignore that. It is an invisible line for women's hoops starting here in the 2023-2024 season. There is an imaginary line under the cylinder, but that's another story for another time. I don't want to get too confused here. I mean, I'm still a lot of I'm still a little woozy after looking at your jacket at the start of the show. I have that effect on people. <laughs> That's going to be a foul on Williams with 33 seconds to go in a one-point game here in the first quarter. When Kim Mulkey even said yesterday to the media, she was interested to see how Michaela Williams transitioned to SEC play. And I don't have any questions about Michaela Williams' offense. It's the defense that now I'm wondering, now that SEC play has come, how is she going to be able to defend against teams that have her scouted? Last year, Poa on for LSU. And Hilke Fedrape is on for Missouri, another freshman. Three-pointer won't drop. Angel Reese comes away with it. And Olympicum back into the game. Shot clock is off. Game clock down to 10. 
Williams with five. Lost the handle, threw it away. Here comes Mama with Williams back, but doesn't get a shot off in time, and that is the end of the first quarter. But Mizzou certainly hanging tough in this tough environment. Full house, a loud crowd here at the PMAC, but it's just a one-point game at the end of the first quarter. I want to take a look at some of this attire when we come back. Can we do that? I think we're going to do that. Dress like Kim Mulkey night. It's not just a celebration. It's a competition. They are picking the best three in the building. Oh, that's got to be in the top three. That, that's a total package right there. Top three. They're going to bring them on the court. I guess the fans are going to decide. The boa is always a nice accessory. Yes, good look. There's your butterflies. And then the winner. That, that could be a top three. The winner. <laughs> now, hello, Kim's tall cousin. The winner is going to get one of Kim's jackets. I don't know if Kim knows that, but. Which jacket? Well, I, that's a good question. Well, well, is it the one that Kim's wearing here tonight, or is it something from her past collection? I mean, are we going from last year? Oh. I, I still love the butterfly one, obviously, as Mike <laughs> loaned that to me. All right, so we will uh, keep track of the competition and let you know after halftime the winner. And Maybe Kim will come out and present the winning jacket before the start of the second half. I think a lot of that will depend on how well her team plays in the second quarter. They're up by one as we start that second quarter. Haley Frank back into the game, wasting no time, launching a three and draining a three. Four three-pointers for Mizzou in seven attempts so far. Well, and that was great execution out of the timeout for Mizzou, setting those double down screens on the weak side for Frank to come around and get that look. Key for LSU against this matchup zone. The ball can't stick. They need to move it quickly, and then special on reversals, they can go inside. Frank staying straight up, not trying to pick up a second foul. Tough shot from Morrow. The rebound, the fight. Mizzou with their first lead since the opening minutes of the game. They fell behind by seven. Bit of a three-point heat check for the Tigers right there from Abby Fight. It'll be LSU basketball. And here's the Frank three from the previous trip. Well, this is just great team execution. You see, not one, not two, but three down screens for Frank to come around and get that look and get it off. She was pumped. She turned around when that came out of her hand and she saw it go down and gave a big yell to this big crowd here at the PMAC. That one rolls in for Morrow. We're well, going back to Frank. Frank struggled in the game against LSU last year. Only three points and constant foul trouble. You got to believe in her fifth year, she has something to prove against the LSU Tigers. Mama getting after it and getting the steal. Poa back on defense. DeBelle finds the trailer. Fights. Who gets it? Count it. And one. Mama, four points, three rebounds, two assists. This is what a point guard does on the road. She's setting her teammates up off the steal. No, she doesn't have the layup. Pulls it out, waits for fight on the weak side, sets her up for the score. Mama averaging six and a half assists a game through non-conference play. That's tops in the SEC. And here is Abby Fights. He finishes off the three-point play. Mizzou, the number one free throw shooting team by percentage in the SEC at 76%. For the first time in the game, Mizzou extends that pressure. LSU worked on it and slices and dices it up for two. It's another interesting point. No team gets to the line more than LSU, and LSU has yet to attempt a free throw, Reese, with the bucket. Well, I think some of it is the zone that Mizzou is running. It's also Mizzou's been doing a great job of trying to keep LSU off the offensive glass. Another turnover, that's number seven for Mizzou. Kim Mulkey worked a lot with her team and shoot around today. They drew the double team, looked weak side, and then you see Flage just take it off the bounce, pull two players, and set Reese up for the easy two. Fight with the rebound. Here comes Mama. She's got great speed all the way to the basket. No. Judd knocked it out of play. LSU ball. Flauger needs a moment. 
Substitution for Mizzou, Grace Slaughter coming back into the game as Fedrape will. She'll stay on the court, actually. It looks like Fight's checking out. And here comes Shrek on, and now Fedrape will check out. Lauge seems to be okay, not 100% maybe, but ready to play. Well, one thing for teams or fans who may not have watched Mizzou yet this year, this is a team that's playing with a greater pace this season. They are pushing tempo. They are shooting more threes. They're getting more scoring opportunities. And Robin Pension said that was by design, and you're seeing that already in this game. They're not afraid to push tempo against this LSU defense. Foul's going to be called on Missouri's Abby Shrek battling for position underneath. Bit of a welcome to the SEC moment for the freshman from Quincy, Illinois. Off to a good start in her Missouri career. Double figures five times already. Mama read it all the way, came away with it, and finishes. She has been a good player for Mizzou throughout her career. It just feels like she's taking a big step this year. Well, we asked Robin Pinchon about that. She said it's the maturity, it's the comfortability. Was in Columbia this offseason, and she says her confidence is sky high from her ability just to work with her team throughout the offseason. Mizzou up by three. LSU has yet to hit a three-pointer. Mama, and that's going to be an offensive foul on the senior point guard from Spain. Take you back to happier times for Dembele. Mama Dembele leads Mizzou Tigers in steals. And there you see, she knows the out-of-bounds play. She sets it up, gets the steal and the score for Mizzou. Moment of consternation here at the PMAC because the announcement was the foul was on LSU, but it was clearly signaled a foul on Missouri. Blood pressure escalated there for a moment. Now it's coming back down a bit. It's LSU basketball. It's Missouri League. Well, that was last year, Poe's 18th drawn charge on this season. So good at reading angles and taking things away from opponents. Morrow sets the screen for Van Lith. Frank knocked it away. Turnover LSU. Dembele up ahead to the freshman slaughter. What a play by Johnson. Hustling back to the block. Williams dropped down the Reese. Count it and the foul. She won't get an assist. But Flauge Johnson may have made the best defensive play of the season so far for an LSU team that's been trying to find their way defensively. Well, I mentioned how good Flauge is in transition. I was referring to offense, but there's the defense. Huge block that stops the easy two from Mizzou. Then that allows LSU to get out and run. They got numbers, and Reese gets two feet in the paint like that. She's going to finish. Huge turnarounds. Looked like it was going to be an easy layup for Mizzou. Instead, it's a chance for a three-point play. And Reese converts. First free throw attempt for LSU, and that is so out of character when you look at these two teams. Missouri is number one in free throw percentage, but they just don't make a lot at the free throw line, whereas LSU was at the free throw line for 52 attempts in their last game. Crowd getting loud here in the second quarter. And Eric, that last foul on Haley Frank, her second of the game. Robin Pinchon deciding to keep her in here. There's a block by Van Lift. Five to shoot for Mizzou. The chance is LSU, four on the shot clock. Frank heaved it up. Here's Van Lith, all the momentum right now with LSU. Van Lith gets it to go. ISO play for Frank there. Great defense by LSU. 
Frank for three. Much needed and quiets the crowd here at the PMAC. Eleven points for Frank. Three of six from outside the three-point line. Williams off the mark so far. 0 for 4 from the field. Slaughter knocked away from behind by Williams. If the shot's not falling, figure out other ways to contribute. And LSU's playing some pretty good defense. They need it because Missouri has been on target so far. One of the last play for Mizzou was for Frank to be able to go one-on-one. -on -one. LSU defends it, so Frank just pops out off a flare screen. Another three for Mizzou to get them the lead. Coming up on the SEC Halftime Report, Steffi Storrens and Nikki Fargus, Ellis Lang here with you. We're going to talk about the game. We're going to talk about conference play, all that great stuff. But we have to talk about Kim Mulkey's jacket tonight. Well, it, you know, I like Skittles. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm a Skittle fan. Melted kind of like the bag. Is my cool. biggest question is why doesn't Eric Freed have on a jacket? Just Christy, just give him that jacket that Eric. you had earlier. It looked good. All right, all and right, that all right. was okay. my response okay. as well. And I here goes Eric I putting have on no the jacket. I have no idea if I can be, you know, put on camera here, but I'm going to do it just for you ladies in the studio. Okay. Okay. Now, now the question is who wore it best, and I think you win, <laughs> sir. <laughs> there we go. All right. Are you guys happy now? Are you happy? I am. Who wore it best? You did. I defer to you on this one. This is the this is Mike the mascot's jacket. Yes, it is. It does smell like Mike has not taken this to the dry cleaner in quite some time. On behalf of America, I'm not going <laughs> to ask you to describe that smell. All right. Well, we'll get to you all at halftime. I hope you have some uh, Skittles ready to go to keep you uh, going. Now I'm going to give this back to Christy. On our game here, we have a game because Missouri's been able to knock down threes. Their top player has been Haley Frank. But she's got two fouls. How does Missouri protect her and manage her minutes here with 4.38 to go before halftime? I, I thought we might see a little offense defense. Obviously, Mizzou has the ball, so Robin Pinchton leaving her in for the scoring opportunity. Again, Mizzou is in the matchup zone in the half court. I expect LSU to try to go at her and get that third foul. Now, does Mizzou slow things down a little bit? Well, one thing they got to do is take care of the basketball. That's their ninth turnover. Van Lith on the pull up. Off the mark. Reese kept it alive and a second chance here with Johnson. Johnson, tough shot. She makes tough shots. Counted and one. Eric, we started off this broadcast by saying all five starters for LSU average double digits, and any one of them can have a big night. Well, it's Flage Johnson here this evening. Gets the offensive rebound, keeps your dribble alive, attacks the rim, gets the and one. Johnson into double figures. Ten and holding. Rebound for Linthicum. One thing for LSU as we talk about the defending national champions, they don't have a lot of depth. They played just six so far here in the first half. Kim it's been Mulkey's a high energy game. Gambele, beautiful finish and one. I think both these coaches right now are going to talk about dribble penetration at halftime because the guards are making plays. It's that quick crossover again by Mama. Beats Haley Van Lip and what touch. She's going full speed downhill. I can't say enough how difficult that is. The body control and her ability to score at the rim. Great improvement for Mama here this season. That is the second personal foul on Haley Van Lip, so she'll go to the bench with the two. Poa back on for LSU. And this is a lineup for four games. LSU rode with while Haley Van Lip was out, just recovering from an injury. And so they're used to this. But Kim Mulkey said yesterday, I believe and I've got true seven players who that eighth might be on any night is still to be determined. Reese in a crowd draws the contact. And she'll go to the line for a couple. I think that's now two on Mama Dembele as well. I mentioned before, Avery Kroenke out with an injury. She would be one of those players in the backcourt playing the two, but could also play the one. Reese at the free throw line. Saturday, men's hoop.
quadruple header here on the SEC Network, also on the ESPN app, featuring 6 Eastern Time, 5 Central, 22nd ranked Ole Miss, 5th ranked Tennessee in Knoxville. That's on Saturday. Three and a half to go, first half. Been a good first half. Frank, deep three, not this time. And Johnson's got the rebound. Johnson, little out of control. Now settles it for Poa. Poa's done a very nice job at the point for LSU. And that is off the leg of Johnson. Dembele got the strip. Missouri basketball. I asked Mama today, hey, if you're playing well, how will we know it? She goes, I'll have a smile on my face. After that defensive stand by Mama, you saw a huge smile. Gets the quick hands in there across the body, goes off of Flage Johnson's leg. Mama's had plenty to smile about, although she is on the floor with the two fouls. Frank on the floor with the two fouls. Abby fights. The freshman slaughter. Frank. Made a fake, made the extra pass. Judd can't get the three. Poe the rebound. Frank back on defense. Again, to your point, does LSU try to attack her here in the half court? Well, and now Mizzou is in player to player, so I would love to see them try to get Angel Reese the ball down low. Morrow, soft touch on the turnaround. Of course, when you got Anissa Morrow who can also score in the post, who cares? Just get it to one of your bigs. <laughs> Six of eight shooting for Morrow. Came in averaging better than 18 points a game. She's got 12. Two minutes to go here on opening night in the SEC. Between LSU and Mizzou. Slaughter. Tough shot. Morrow was there with the defense to get the block. Four to shoot. Fifth block in the game already for LSU. When you have rim protectors, and we have, we've seen guards and post get the blocks of this evening, that allows you to extend your pressure defense, and that's what we're seeing from LSU. The drop a back on for Mizzou. Judd with three. She's got to put something up, and it's going to be a traveling violation. Turnover for Missouri. That's their tenth. Ellie's got to be a little bit cautious here in the backcourt, playing with the two fouls. Well, that defensive pressure paid off. Poe with the turnover. LSU's been sloppy taking care of the basketball. That's their seventh turnover. And Dembele will get no credit for that, but it was the on-ball pressure that forced that turnover. 90 seconds to go in the first half. Get you to the studio at halftime to wrap up what's happened so far night one of conference play. Judd, Dembele wide, open three. Second chance here for Missouri on the glass. Back out top. A little bit of a drought here. Frank can't get the three. Knocked out of the hands of Johnson, LSU ball. One thing about this game so far, it has been physical. The number of times you've seen players on the floor going for loose balls, going for rebounds, and the officials have let them play for the most part. Zeus has been holding their own on the glass as well, Christy. They're minus two in rebounding margin against a team that is plus 17 in margin on the season. And that is something I was looking at for the zoo in this game because in their losses this year, they had been getting beat on the glass. They've had some pretty good wins. As you mentioned, it's kind of a different vibe for this Mizzou team, a little bit more of tempo. They beat Illinois, they beat Belmont, they beat Missouri State. Part of their nine wins in non-conference play. Last time they were in Baton Rouge was two years ago, January of 2022. LSU won in overtime, although things have changed a little bit <laughs> for LSU in a, in a couple of years' time. That would be the Mulkey effect. <laughs> Here comes Shrek. Last year, 
LSU won by 20 in Columbia, but it was a four point game in the third quarter. So Mizzou hanging around again against an LSU team that's in the top 10 right now. Final minute of the first half. Frank does such a great job of reading how the defense plays her. At that time, there was a switch, so she flared out. They just couldn't take advantage of it. That's another block for LSU. Seven first half blocks for the Tigers. And now it's going to be a foul on the freshman. The drop eight. And more free throws coming for LSU. Robin Pinchon was very aware we've got to take care of the ball and we cannot put them on the free throw line. That series, in a nutshell, was what the head coach was afraid of. Yeah, it took a while for LSU to get to the free throw line in this half. Didn't attempt the free throw in the first quarter. Now they have a 91% free throw shooter at the line. Hasn't been Michaela Williams' best game so far because she's had already some memorable games in her first year playing in her home state. At LSU, including at 42 against Kent State, the highest scoring game for a Tiger in 28 years. At 17 last time out, those are her first two points of the game. Shot clock off, final second, second quarter. Shrek short on the three. Williams has plenty of time takes a look at the clock tries a three and it won't go and that will be it for the first half LSU matches their largest lead of the first half on top by seven here at halftime well I think if, if you're Robin Pinchon and Mizzou you're happy where you are you got to clean up some of those turnovers but otherwise I'm looking forward to the second half 15 5 run for LSU to close out the first half seven point game let's get you to the studio and Christy, it's warm in the building. Too many layers for Christy, so she had to take the jacket off. It's there, though. I mean, hopefully, it's not blinding you like it's blinding me right now. Eight nothing run to close out the first half for LSU. Missouri was on top. Missouri was hanging tough. A couple of their key players were playing with two fouls, but LSU did what they do best. They attacked the paint and started getting a lot of hoops there. Absolutely, this is an LSU team that averages 48 paint points a game already with 26. How they got it into their bigs. Morrow with the drop step post off, the dump off to Angel Reese. Flaje Johnson was so good off the bounce in that first half, creating for herself and her teammates. And sometimes it's just as easy as find your big and let her go to work. Missouri 5 of 16 from outside the three-point line. Big part of their offense in the early going cooled off as the half went along. LSU still looking for their first three-pointer. Christy mentioned the paint points. Turnovers always going to be a big story when you're taking on LSU. Let's see how the second half unfolds. First possession of the quarter belongs to LSU. Set play by LSU coming out of the break. Well defended by Mizzou. Angel Reese hangs with it, and she'll go to the line. Angel Reese is now four of 12 from the three, uh, from the field, rather. She gets ready to step to the stripe here. That's the thing. If you're defending Angel Reese, the defense does not stop till you or your teammates get the ball. That means no fouling, and that definitely means trying to keep her off the glass. Reese played all 20 in the first half, as did Morrow, as did Johnson. One interesting note, six played for LSU. LSU had six blocks. Each player had one block. I thought there was some interesting plays defensively and some strong plays defensively by an LSU team. And Kim Mulkey has talked about it in the past weeks about how this team isn't where they need to be defensively. Case in point, Missouri goes to work on the offense and gets points in the paint from Judd. That's just an example of how well Coach Mizzou is. You know they talked about that play at halftime. Each time there's been timeouts, they've come out and they've executed. you got to steal points anytime you can, and that's what Mizzou is doing. Morrow can't get it. Reese has the offensive rebound. Reese steps inside for two. Angel Reese now with four offensive rebounds just by herself. Mizzou has got 
to do a better job of finding her when the shot goes up and keeping her off the glass. Linthicum. Slaughter. Back off for Linthicum, who gets her first points. Talented freshman, 1,000-point score, 1,000-point rebounder, playing at Jefferson City High School. Coming off her career best 20 points in 20 minutes against Kansas City. Johnson on the cut. Williams found her. Frank and Dembele go down. Frank gets the look for three. Williams has the rebound. Williams. Robin Pinchon is out near half court here. The official wants to go to the to the monitor right now and review that because of the extracurricular activity mm -hmm. there between both Reese and Frank. So a foul has been called on Angel Reese. Pinchton was out beyond half court to get her point the across. The called foul is under review. So they are going to the monitor here. Reese got up a little high on Frank. And then Frank's head hit Reese's knee. So we'll take a media timeout while they go to the monitor. Angel Reese said, I did nothing wrong here. You saw the first look. We'll take another look, and we'll see what the officials say when we come back. Keep an eye on Angel Reese in the paint, number 10. She reaches around Haley Frank. That arm comes down and comes up on the chin and then wraps. This has been upgraded to an intentional foul on Angel Reese. So it is upgraded. It was called a common foul. It's been upgraded to an intentional foul called against Reese. Being announced to the crowd right now. So that means that Missouri will shoot two free throws. And it doesn't have to be Haley Frank. It could be anybody on the Missouri squad to shoot the free throws here. So an interesting moment here with LSU. They have their largest lead and the intentional upgrade to Reese. Kim Mulkey talking to her veteran player right now, just trying to make sure she's back, she's ready to go. Angel showing the frustration here, certainly didn't agree at all with the call after they went to the monitor. So it will be Frank that shoots the free throws. And when you say anybody on the Missouri team can take the free throws, it's going to be Haley Frank, who's number one in the SEC right now at 89%. Angel Reese still trying to plead her case to the officials right now. So Frank makes the free throws. Now will be Missouri basketball on the side. Triple down screen again for Haley Frank. Open for three. Big shot for Frank. That's a five point swing for Mizzou due to that foul. Morrow on the turnaround for two. First points of the second half for Morrow. She's got 14. As much as we talk about Reese, it seems like when LSU needs a bucket, they get Morrow in the paint and feed her the ball. Let it come. Judd. Tough pass. 
Williams with the steal after the Missouri turnover. Williams for three. Eric, I told you at halftime, it's not if but when Michaela Williams gets going, and that's just a great example of just how prolific a score Michaela Williams is for this program. First three for LSU after going 0 for 6 in the first half, and then a turnover by Mizzou. Just a sloppy pass. Michaela Williams is there to shoot the gap, but she's just reading the defense the whole way down. That little hesitation behind the back just elevates to knock it down. That's batted out of bounds. I think you saw Williams had that three-point look at the end of the first half. Wide open look didn't go down as she was coming off the court. Kim Mulkey, it looked like she was just saying, keep shooting. I mean, Michaela Williams is so dynamic, so talented offensively. The first thing Kim Mulkey is going to say is, Keep going, keep shooting, find that stroke. Score's got to shoot, and that's one thing Kim Mulkey has said to me. She goes, Michaela Williams can get her shot at any point, and apparently Flavre Johnson can as well. Johnson with 15, Reese with 15, Morrow with 14, another turnover for Missouri. Johnson in transition to the basket, count it, and the foul. LSU has picked up their defense, forcing three turnovers. That's allowing them to get out in transition, and I have said it. Flage Johnson is at her best when she can get out in transition, but I stand corrected as well because she can also knock it down from deep. And Kim Mulkey, she knows it. Second 10-0 run of the game for LSU. They had an 8-0 run at the end of the half, scored the first two of the second half. That was the first 10-0 run. Now they're on an 11-0 run after the three-point play is converted. And just like that, it's a 17-point LSU lead. And Eric, I had to tip my hat to Anissa Morrow's defense on Haley Frank. She's gotten a couple good looks, but the number of screens Mizzou is running Frank off, and for the most part, Morrow has been there. She's been the one talking to her teammates to get out and now get the steal. Morrow can't finish, and Van Lith can't control it. But just as you're talking about the job that Anissa Morrow is doing and denying Haley Frank, she gets the steal, and a timeout now called by Missouri. The crowd will tell you what's happening here at the PMAC. Their Tigers are up by 17. So far, big second half for LSU, stretching it out here in Baton Rouge. Some separation for the Tigers of LSU. Seventh ranked LSU on top by 17 here in the third quarter. It's an 11 nothing run right now for LSU. Well, I gotta believe Kim Mulkey talked about defense at halftime because the intensity on the defensive end for LSU has picked up. We see Williams with a steal and pulling up from deep to give her team and extend the lead. And then Flaze Johnson, active hands and just takes it coast to coast. You see her the whole way measuring, measuring, seeing what the defense is doing, and glides right by him for the kiss off the glass. I think in many ways that Flauge block, when she came back and got that block in the second quarter, that sparked a little something for LSU defensively because they've been getting the block shots. They've got seven steals as a team right now. They've made it very difficult on LSU. The, uh, LSU Tigers made it difficult on Missouri, those Tigers, you know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't screw up the Tigers today. Out of the timeout by Missouri, it's a rebound for Van Lip off the miss. Well, the big part of this quarter already, nine points off turnovers for LSU. And somehow, some way, that made its way to Reese and the foul. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Flavze Johnson was trying to hit Morrow passes off target and goes sails right by Morrow, but Reese is right <laughs> there. And Flaugé, I'm sure, saying, yeah, that's what I meant to do. <laughs> the smile says it all. Angels like Flaugé, that still goes in the books. 
as an assist for you. Could have been a turnover, but I'm a good teammate. 19-point <laughs> lead for LSU. Dembele splits defenders again. She was so good in the first half. Her stat line, eight points, five rebounds, four assists, and four steals. They need a little bit more of that sizzle here in the second half. And Lip's been quiet, knocks down her first points of the second half. And this is the LSU team this year. They've got five players on the floor. They all score in a variety of ways, but depending on how you decide to defend them, they can pick you apart, especially in the second half when they got one of the best point guards in the history of our game, Kim Mulkey, directing traffic. Frank on the turnaround. No, and Angel Reese has the rebound. That's her seventh. I thought Frank rushed that shot, and that's what the shot blocking ability of LSU will do to you. You think you got don't have enough time and you rush it. Morrow's gonna get called for the offensive foul as Frank takes the contact. Haley Frank, because she's such a veteran, and we know she's been able to sell these plays, and I think. I think it's as much the extended arm by Morrow that forced that call as anything. And obviously, I know Kim Mulk is not happy with it. And on the other end, Abby fights, buries the three. Morrow trying to show some range. And that foul is going to be called on fight as Reese was fighting for the rebound. You have to be so disciplined when you go against Angel Reese because you cannot watch the flight of the ball. You must make contact with her and then try to track the fly of the ball. Watch the lob there for Reese. Back to Van Litt. Open three is good. Bele goes to the left, no. Johnson with the rebound, three bodies back on the floor, back behind the play. And I think Robin Pinchton just got a technical. She was stepped out onto the court, wondering where the foul was, so she gets teed up here. So the belly went down. The question is, obviously the LSU player is a trip, but how did Dembele go down? And that's what Robin Pinchton was asking, and she was asking that question well onto the court. And Polani Sporlock Welch. And that is a point of emphasis mm -hmm. this year for the officials. Keep the coaches in their box. So Williams will go to the free throw line. Those two are talking it out. Eight now for Williams. Johnson leading the way with 18. Another good game for her offensively. And you're seeing Mizzou go to player to player defense now here in the half court. Williams rejected. Good defensive play by Fight. Scramble for the basketball. Reese gets on the deck. Van Lift out of the scramble. Can't make the three. Reese tapped it to Johnson. Back to back 20 point games for Flage Johnson. LSU has scored 29 points in the third quarter. And we still have two and a half minutes to go in the quarter. Great save by Johnson to Van Lith. Back behind the play is Morrow. Yeah. 
16 for Morrow. 8 nothing run for LSU. Look how Morrow got out on that hedge and was able to get back, but better read by Frank to curl it and get to the rim. The assist to Dembele, that's her fifth. And that ends the run. Johnson steps back, short on the three. Two on two the other way. Now three on two with Fight joining. Corner three from Shrek. Reese with the rebound. Rebound number nine as she closes in on another double-double. Van Lith, the entry to Reese. Johnson couldn't get it, and the rebound for Fight. We see we'll have numbers if they push. There's Shrek, got Van Lith in the air, but couldn't finish. But she'll go to the free throw line. Van Lith picks up her third personal foul. So Van Lith will go to the bench for the first time here in the second half. Poa back on. Seven points, four rebounds, five assists for Haley Van Lith. Shrek off the mark. Sunday, back to league play. Quadruple header starts at noon Eastern time. Kentucky and Tennessee meeting in Knoxville. Christy and I will be courtside at Thompson Bowling Arena. Both those teams winning their openers. Tennessee with a win at Auburn tonight. Rakia Jackson going for 24 points. Kentucky with a 10-point win over Arkansas on opening night in the SEC. Asia Petty went for 23 for the Wildcats. I mean, Kentucky doesn't have a post down, and so Asia Petty's got to play like she did tonight throughout SEC play, and if she does, it bodes well for Kentucky. Morrow had it tangled up a little bit and calling to see if it was touched out of bounds. Morrow thinks it certainly was touched out of bounds. So does Kim Mulkey. We've talked a lot about Kim's top. It's the heels that I'm kind of envious of right now. Got the glitter sparkling look there too. So it makes you one of the best analysts in the business. <laughs> <laughs> My attention span. You, 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 just, you just look for the total package. You see things that I saw the, the frilly stuff in the cuffs and the, what, what did they call it? Uh, Steffi called it the Skittles. The Skittles, the Skittles, Skittles colors, colors, yeah. You see shoes. Just different. Shot clock off, final seconds of what's been an outstanding quarter for LSU offensively. 31 points here in the quarter. Morrow trying to add to it, and she'll have a chance to add to it at the free throw line. Foul on Fred Drape. So Morrow will head to the free throw line. Had an amazing two years with DePaul. Steps into a key role with this LSU program, trying to defend their national championship. And what has she done so far? Everything. Piled up the double doubles, nine on the season, leading the team in steals, leading the team in blocks, entering play here tonight. It has looked like a seamless transition, but I know it hasn't been that easy. You know it wasn't easy? That quarter for Mizzou. They are outscored 32-17 in that quarter. And LSU pulling away here at the PMAC. A lot of Haley Van Lith in that third quarter. Popping out off the inbounds play, realizing her player doubled, so she's open for three. Reese can't get the rebound. A little assist to her playmate, Flage. And the head coach is loving it. In the third quarter, LSU shot 60% from the field. They scored 32 points in that quarter to stretch their lead out 
to 22 at the end of three. Great balance with Reese at 17 points and nine rebounds. Johnson leading the way with 20 points, 17 points also for Anissa Morrow. We started to talk a little bit about Morrow at the end of the third quarter, so tell me what you've noticed with her game from what you saw at DePaul and now what you've seen so far for LSU. Well, I think it's what's always made her good, and that's just that relentless spirit. I asked her, I said, hey, a lot of people doubted. Why would you leave DePaul? You were already making a name for yourself there. And she said, I wanted to prove to everyone that I can be the best. And she didn't start the season. She was coming off the bench. And when Samaya Smith went down with injury, more went on Morrow's shoulders, and she has done nothing but respond. This young lady, given the opportunity, is shining in her role here at LSU. And it's interesting talking to Kim Mulkey today about the dynamic of bringing these highly regarded transfers, Haley Van Litt and Anissa Morrow, into the mix. And also, when you bring a freshman, a highly touted freshman like Michaela Williams, she thought Kim did, like, well, the Michaela Williams and Flauge Johnson dynamic was interesting, and Kim made a fist with each hand and kind of bumped them together. And she thought it was similar with Morrow and Reese, not antagonistically, but just it drew up the competition on both sides. Reese and Johnson, the established players for that LSU team, being challenged by these newcomers. And it's all fit together so far. Fight for three. At the end of the day, iron sharpens iron. And that's what I took from our conversation with Kim Mulkey today is that you have some super competitive kids who want to be the best they can be. Offensive and foul called on Johnson. And Kim Mulkey can't even bear to watch. Flaje Johnson getting downhill again and the fans don't agree Haley with Frank it. Frank got there. I thought it was a good call. <laughs> Frank spins inside for two. And he Frank up to 20 points and Eric goes up in hard fought points here this evening. Back out Williams. Williams reverses it up. Count it and one. Uh, speaking of hard fought points, Michaela Williams, little pass fake to get the angle to get by her own defender, hangs in the air, little reverse pivot, but it is the soft kiss off the glass with the finish. I told you, not if, but when <laughs> with Michaela Williams. 20 point LSU lead. How about some of the freshmen in the SEC, Christy? Here we are in opening night, and here's what these four had done in non-conference play. Scott with five Freshman of the Week awards in the SEC. Full Wiley filling up the highlight reel for South Carolina. Grace Slaughter playing a big, important role as a starter for this Missouri team as DeBelli scores. And then you've got Williams, who all she did this year is put 42 on the board in the game. I think it was the third week of the season. I looked at the top 10 scores in the SEC, and four of them were freshmen. And it's around the country. I mean, this freshman class is just remarkable throughout. Tremendous assist by Angel Reese tomorrow there. Sixteen assists for LSU as a team tonight. The Rappi gets her first points. Well, Missouri four for four from the field to start the second half. We're going to need a handful of stops here to get back into this game. There's one. Can they stay hot from the field? Judd, offensive foul. Poa got there for the contact. Van Lith will check back into the game for LSU. I don't think Poa gets enough love for all the little things she does for this ball club. Filled in so well at point guard with four games. Haley Van Lith missed, but Eric, 19th drawn charge by Poa here already this season. Couple here tonight, too. Judd picks up her fourth personal foul. Rajay Johnson knew she missed it, 
Second chance here for LSU. Reese with the rebound, so she's got another double-double, and Johnson makes the most of her second chance. 22 for Johnson. Back-to-back -back new season highs for the sophomore from Savannah. And now the steal. Morrow will head to the free throw line. Foul on Dembele, that's her third. So that is the starting four player for LSU that picks the pocket and then takes it coast to coast. She's quick. I mean, she's got quickness. She's got quick feet, quick hands. That is what part I think is has improved since transferring to LSU. I think she is quicker laterally. I think she's quicker defensively than what I saw at DePaul. Or maybe she's being asked of her here. Angel Reese picked up the rebound the previous trip, 17 points, 10 rebounds. So that is seven double-doubles this year, 41 in her LSU career. And Bele, aggressive pass, tracked down by Slaughter. Slaughter, good fake to get free, couldn't hit the three. That rebound for Anissa Morrow is the 1,000th of her career. That's remarkable. 1,000 career rebounds. And she is on a pretty good pace here to in the next few games maybe a couple of weeks to have 2,000 points to go with the 1,000 rebounds. Haley Frank coming out of the game. This out of bounds set by LSU puts so much pressure on a defense because depending on how you defend it, you can't afford to leave a post one-on-one -on -one down low. Defender well by Mizzou, Dembele, pass fake, couldn't get it, Morrow's got another rebound. Williams to Johnson just out of her reach. And a turnover for LSU. Mizzou will walk it up. They're on top 32-31 in the second quarter. Had some good momentum. But then LSU closed out the half with an 8-0 run. Had a couple of runs in the second half, a 10-0 run. Stretched out the lead. And they have kept pretty good distance on Missouri. That one is off the mark. And it'll be LSU basketball. But Eric, that was Morrow who switched on to Mama Dembele off that high on ball screen and took away her ability to get downhill. Frank will come back into the game next dead ball. Johnson, tough take, the finish for two. Kim Mulk is yelling at everybody else, getting them in the position they want. And Blase Johnson's like, all right, I'm just going to take it. I'm having a night here, coach. I've got 24 points. I'm three shy of my career high. I mean, Kim Mulkey was literally on the sideline getting players everywhere, and Blage just takes off and blows by the defender. And it is that ability to hang in the air that allows her to finish so beautifully around the rim. SEC freshman of the year a season ago, started all 36 games, averaged 11 points a game. Foul's going to be on Reese. That's her second. Angel shook her head a couple of times here tonight. That's Abby Shrek. I do think Shrek has a tremendous upside here at Mizzou. I mean, she can fill it up quickly and playing off guard or point guard that gives this Mizzou Tigers 
a really versatile guard on the perimeter. That's fight deflecting out of play. That stops the clock with 4.59 to go in the fourth quarter. Media timeout here at the PMAC. LSU trying to stretch their winning streak to 14, up 22 in the fourth. Fourth quarter of the final game of the Knights in the SEC on opening night in the conference. Number one team in the country stays undefeated. South Carolina knocks off Florida to end the Gators' three-game winning streak. Five players in double figures. Tahina Pow Pow led the way with 17 points, four or five from outside the three-point line. Impressive win for Vanderbilt on the road at Mississippi State. I mean, that was a game I was watching. I was eager to see how the Commodores would come out to start SEC play. They won by plus seven on the glass in Starkville against a much bigger Bulldog ball club. Did that to end the Bulldogs' five-game winning streak. We mentioned before Kentucky with a surprise here on opening night. Asia Petty with the 22 points. Talia Scott, the freshman, the leading scorer in the SEC, held to 11 points as Kentucky won by 10. They'll take on Tennessee on Sunday at noon here on the SEC Network. Now the media timeout. Van Lith missed the three. Morrow another rebound. Williams launches a three. That won't drop. Reese. Before the shot, Morrow got tangled up with Sarah Linthicum is into the game for Missouri, and Sarah Linthicum is going to pick up the foul. I've had to keep my Tiger straight here tonight between <laughs> LSU and Missouri. Now i got to keep my Linthicum sisters straight because Sarah's on the floor, Hannah's in the starting five, and Micah is on the bench as well. And We're going to go to the monitor here again. So we didn't get the announcement, but the scores table has been told, or so we've been told, that they're saying, does this shot go up before the foul? I don't think so. Now, in her hand, you see the official's hand yes. up while the ball's still in Reese's hand. Eric, Mizzou has had to work so hard to try to keep LSU off the glass. I cannot say how hard that has been for them. And, and that's why you're seeing the bodies to the floor as much as we have today. Fouls on Sarah Linthicum pulling down Morrow. And the review is complete, and the announcement is... Confirm no basket, balls out of bounds with a 20 second reset. Let the record show that Christy Thomas Scuddy, I believe, is four for four on review predictions here to start conference play. Well, it helps that it is a review and it's going slow for me. <laughs> <laughs> Your processing time, yes. you got to build up that speed as the season goes along. I got you. Inside of five minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. It's been all LSU in the second half. The run that really started at the end of the second quarter. That's Morrow who scores again. Morrow's got 23. Her LSU high was 37 impressively against Virginia. Really her coming out game for LSU. Well, that was down in the Caymans. Reese wasn't on the trip, and that is right after Samaya Smith went down with her season-ending injury. And that's what I keep talking about with Morrow. She was given the opportunity, and she has shined in her role. Ben Lith tried to hang with Dembele, but gets called for the foul. That will be her fourth. We mentioned that word depth earlier, and still LSU has played just six here today. Should that be a concern? You mentioned Smith, very important player in their rotation, emerging as an improved player after a freshman year, unable to go this year. Should LSU be concerned about their numbers? Well, I think the very first minute of the game tells you why. Morrow gets that quick foul. It really affected how she played defensively there early on. And that's the thing, that margin of error for the post for LSU. They only have four bodies in the post. And so Morrow, Reese have to avoid foul trouble, have to be able to stay on the floor. Del Rosario is a valid 6-5 post for them. But against an offense like Mizzou, Kim Mulkey wasn't happy with that matchup tonight. Angel Reese working hard on the glass to get the putback. 
19 and 12 now for Angel. Frank took it away from Van Lip and got the two. But that all starts with Mama Dembele's ability to probe out of transition and get the defense to drop. Trail three didn't go, but that left uh, Frank open for that offensive rebound. Morrow can't get it. And a foul is going to be called at half court. It has been close to a seven woman rotation as of late for LSU with Leah Del Rosario, the freshman, 6'6 six, six freshman, but we haven't seen her today. She's averaged 14 minutes a game in non conference. And she's had some big games. Her first 10 games of the year, Eric, averaged only five points, three rebounds. Her last four games coming into tonight, 14 points and nine rebounds. So she's definitely getting better. She's in tremendous shape from when she from where she was when the season started. She just needs more game action. The belly at the free throw line. SEC gymnastics season starts tomorrow night right here on the SEC Network. LSU is ranked third in the preseason rankings. They'll be here at the PMAC to take on Ohio State. Our coverage begins at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central tomorrow. You can always watch it on the ESPN app as well. Friday night Heights making their return. So it's a double-double now for Morrow. She's got 23 and 10. That's her ninth, three, ninth straight double-double. And Morrow scores again. But that's because LSU was running shooter out to the corner, and the four cheated out, and that left Morrow 101 on that weak side block. Great pass by Michaela Williams. Williams now has seven assists. 19 assists for LSU as a team. Mama, good defense by Van Lip on the floor with the four fouls and still playing the good D. Reese to the hoop, to the free throw line. So with 2.22 to go in the game, Poa is going to come in first for LSU because she's checking in for Morrow, who will get a great round of applause here from this PMAC crowd. Morrow's going to finish with her ninth consecutive double double on the season. Ten total double doubles at LSU now for Morrow. 63 in her career. Remember, she piled up 53 in her two years at DePaul. That's going to be it for Angel Reese. I thought Angel Reese may have been the hardest worker on the floor tonight. You just saw her fighting for everything. Second chance opportunities. She was looking for her shot in the early going, it seemed, Christy. It wasn't all just trying to get some putbacks. Well, I talked about how hard Mizzou worked to keep LSU off the glass. LSU has had to work hard defensively against this motion offense because you see five players moving at all times. The communication, the movement, staying in a stance, their closeouts. I thought the defense was really good by LSU, especially here in the second half. Malia Del Rosario is into the game for LSU. So that's seven players onto the floor for LSU tonight as Poe will bring it across half court. Van Lith stays out there. Poa off the window for two. Sarah Linthicum out to Haley Frank. Frank can't get the three. Fight offensive rebound. Now timeout's going to be called here because Kim Mulkey's going to empty the bench. Three LSU players go for 20 tonight. 21 for Reese, 24 for Johnson, 25 for Morrow. It was an off scoring night for Michaela Williams. She had 11 points on three of 11 shooting, but she did have six rebounds and seven assists. You heard yourself, right? It's an off scoring night. 
she is averaging 70 points, so you're not wrong with that. If we put a headset on Michaela right now, I said, Michaela, was this an off scoring night? She, she would yes. nod her head yes before I finish the question. I think it's already the expectations of, because of how talented that young lady is. And a foul's going to be called on Del Rosario. So Janae Kent is into the game. Izzy Besselman is on the floor. Angelica Velez is on the floor. And Amani Bartlett's. Three for Shrek. The ninth made three from Rizzo here this evening. Unfortunately, out of 30 attempts. Final minute here at LSU. It was tied in the first half. Three-pointer on the way from Kent. No. Rebound pulled down by Shrek. Mizzou was hanging tough with LSU, but the defending national champions went to work late in the second quarter, dialed up their defense, as Christy mentioned, and then the offense went to work from there. Three go for 20 or more. LSU puts 92 on the board. Three points under their scoring average, but in the SEC opener, it's a 20-point win for the Tigers. Kim Mulkey might not play a lot of players, but the players she plays know how to get it done. And I thought the defense was exceptional in the second half, and players know how to score for the Tigers. For Missouri, this is an improved team, but this ran into a tough place to play, and to do it for 40 minutes against LSU is hard to do. I think Mizzou is much improved. The pace of play, Mama Dembele's play is only going to help them. They have Alabama at home on Sunday. I, I will say, look out for Mizzou because they are so improved. Haley Frank led the way for Mizzou with 22 points on the night. Dembele had 15 points, six rebounds, and nine assists for Missouri. That falls to nine and five in the season. LSU is now 14 and one. Angel Reese had a double double with 21 points and 12 rebounds. And Issa Morrow 25 and 